he's alive. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. As I took so, the ginger ale really close to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, hey. Yeah. I don't even uh, think anybody's watching yeah, right smart. now. Oh, we got one person. Oh, no, they left. Never mind. Hi. No Hi. one. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> We're a little late coming to live because we had yeah. some stuff going on in the background. So retrograde, be retrograding and all the things. So, um, but we're here and we are going to be talking about shadow and bone season two. So this was yeah. my pick. I'm piggybacking off of what Chris had put out there as far as um, Shadow and Bone Season 1. So that way we could wrap it up and then move on to the audible books because that's what seems to be happening. That's totally what's happening. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. You, would you like to give the people an update on um, your new political Oh, book? yeah. The situation before we go. Yeah. Let's do yeah. that so that yeah. everybody's not like, what? <laughs> um so the eye patch is not an aesthetic choice <laughs> although the eye on it it might be listen i love you so much and i love that you've got some sense of humor as to what is happening because <laughs> you are an incredible person and i love you <laughs> thank you you're welcome yeah i mean i um are thank you bear uh <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to the pirate. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey Kim, hey everybody. So yeah, let me let me do a little update. So um you might notice that I've been, I'm talking a little bit out of the side of my mouth and stuff like that. I'm actually not. It just looks like that because I currently have um a tooth infection that led to swelling, which led to something called Bell's palsy. And Bell's palsy basically there's a canal with a bunch of nerves and when it swells it cuts off the blood flow and oxygen to all of those nerves and so the nerves on one side of your face essentially die and have to rebuild themselves once the swelling goes down so uh puckering my lips is hilarious i'll show you oh what happened over there we don't know um the eye patch is because i literally can't close my eye all the way and so it's more to comfortable keep it, to keep it yeah. To keep it moist yeah. and to also keep debris from getting into it because usually we would blink to get rid of that or protect our eye. I can move my eye. I just can't close it all the way. And so because of that, it's always red and irritated if I'm not wearing this. So um, before this, I had like gauze and some medical tape that I was doing. to. to it was sleep. really it was really impressive. You should see the screenshots I got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the upside. Uh, I think that I have a lot of potential for Two-Face from Batman. Um, it is an effortless cosplay with Bell's mm -hmm. palsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will exhibit A. It's hard to see you from so far away. It's hard. You're just, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's only one side. It's only one side. Mm -hmm. Bear says he likes that sweater. Um, my <laughs> niece... And my sister-in-law got it for me uh, on my niece's birthday, which is very backwards, but they, they surprised me with it and got it. Um, but it's super comf. Hot topic, actually. Um, nice. It was on his clearance. But um, yeah, so um, I was like, well, I have an eye patch and there's privateers in here, not pirates, because they have a license. Um, and so, you know, we went with it. We went with the vibe. And then my mother was like, I have an eye. And so... Let me get close to the camera. She gave me this, and it's held on with medical tape at the moment. Get up in there. I think it's nice. I like it. I like it. I love it. I love your sense of humor. I mean, the fact that you just <laughs> just owning it all. I was like, this is a fantastic. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't know. With Bell's okay. palsy, I've heard some people say it comes back pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But the doctor also told me, like, this could be permanent potentially or even reoccurring. It could be something that just happens from now on. We don't no. know. Um, We're hoping that does not happen. No. Yeah. I reject, but also, I like, it's not that. lost on me. It's not lost on me that I work with Hell, who's half and half, and literally half of my face doesn't work right now. And I'm like, <laughs> funny. Ha ha. Yeah. yeah. Get it. Thanks. <laughs> ha 
aha. You're like, thanks, goddess. Thanks yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. I have <laughs> another patch that my niece just brought home, and I wanted her to paint it for uh, missing and murdered indigenous women, uh, girls, and two spirits. Right. And so it's going to have like a little red handprint with the letters across it. And I'll be switching out with this one and that one back and forth. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, so just for the record, oh, a googly eye would be. No, see, look, I am too ADHD for a googly eye because it makes a sound when you <laughs> rattle it. And I would just be a walking rattle all day. Just, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. <laughs> um, the swelling actually has gone down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> since when I first started things, believe it or not. Um, yeah. So, you know, Odin is speaking through me. It's true. Well, I do work with Odin. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, when, also, when you first sent honey, me the picture, when you first sent me the picture, you were quite swollen on one side. Like it was, and I noticed that in the last yeah. couple of days it has gone down. So, and I know that that in itself, just the swelling is yeah, a very also, painful. Yeah, and it it puts pressure on everything else, yeah. and so with the already bad tooth and the pressure on that, and being careful what I'm eating. Like today, I'm just gonna warn you guys ahead of time. I am sorry if it gets sloppy and you don't like that. Like, look away because <laughs> keep us on, but look away. Listen, I'm gonna you be can't sloppy tell from the other eye, but like I'm gonna be sloppy <laughs> in solidarity. Um, I'm here. I've got pizza with ranch. We're going, yeah. going in. <laughs> yes. I have pulled pork with coleslaw on it that's open face, so I'm gonna like be carving it with a fork and trying to put it in because if I tried to bite it, yeah, like I can't open this one fully. And it's a you should see me trying to drink from a water bottle. I have to turn it sideways and go like this. It's a whole process. Anyway, oh my god! Oh, the first time I tried to do mouthwash, I went to swish it and it just shot out the side of my mouth because I forgot that I couldn't keep a seal. Because you can't like keep pressure on. Yeah, so I literally have to like duck lip, hold my lip, and then just kind of like swish. Just push around. It's the whole thing. Around. We're learning new things about myself this week. Um, you know, I there's you know medical bills and things and all of that, and so it's it's scary. It could potentially be here. I'm really hoping it's not. Um, you know, only one of my nostrils moves. <laughs> Um, it's a whole thing, but, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to crack a fucking joke and keep going. So this is, I'm here. Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to roll that bean footage. Yeah. Roll it. Roll it. Oh, bear says that he also, feels. Yes. Free. I feel wiser. Bear, Bear sells. He, he feels yeah. for you because he had to go through all that stuff with his mouth. Um, what people don't know is Bear had a double jaw advancement for uh, obstructive sleep apnea. So they actually cut his jaw in four different mm. places and moved it all forward and then wired him shut. The man in the beginning of our relationship made me blend a cheeseburger for him because <laughs> I was so desperate to eat. Yeah. Blended a oh, cheeseburger. Yeah. With a strawberry milkshake, I believe is what it was. I was disgusted. But anywho, moving on. Roll that bean footage. <laughs> Here we go. What you do? It's not a good face. Oh, it's He says that everything I'm he's saying is in happy. jest. He just wants to make sure that you know that everything oh, he's yeah, saying in jest because he loves you and he's been through something similar. So, oh no, and we have. No, I get it. Absolutely. I mean, and yeah, like, oh yeah, and I have 
I have a Molly right. who just so, wants food. That's yeah, I know. We have know. pirate you cats. Just want food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some people have parrots. Privateers have cats. Right. <laughs> Apparently. Well, they oh help with the rats on the ship. <laughs> they well, yeah, she's actually a very good mouser. <laughs> So that tracks. <laughs> it's funny. Well, <clears throat> so we are going to eat and talk. We, we suggest we that you all, I mean, if this is one of those AMSR or whatever you call them um, videos, you're going to hear yeah, a lot sure. of that today. Yeah, we're going to we're going to do those things yeah. because we are hungry and we have not eaten and we need to chomp. But we also need to tell you about the things Shadow and Bone season two. Let's get into it. Okay. So, so our last review, just to uh-huh. recap there, we, we yeah, just, yeah. our last episode, we reviewed season one. Um, mm-hmm. and it, it got flying colors pretty much. I think it only got one or two, yeah. maybe four stars. Everybody was like fives. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and we really, really liked it. And so we continued on. Uh, unfortunately, it is canceled now. Um, mm-hmm. hopefully they bring it back in the future or something. I don't know, but. There's a um, big thing. Did you see the video I sent you? No, I didn't get yeah. a chance to look at it. <laughs> I'm but um, there is like a whole thing. Why am I getting? Who's Nick? Why are you texting me? <laughs> oh, okay. Have we fallen um, off the radar? I don't know. I don't. We know. went from we have one a bunch of people feeling. watching to now no just one. Which is probably my laptop. Yeah, I'm, I'm spreading it around. Then? Also, for those watching, like, please, um, you know, share it around. Let people know that we're live. Oh, Sometimes two. they're coming the back. Notification in. is very delayed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sometimes things happen. It happens. Okay. No more yeah. pirate jokes until we get more views. <laughs> okay. You can't tell, but that's my business face. Pirate cat. Pirate cat. Pirate cat. I told oh, my brother, nothing. I was like, look, if you need anyone to lie for you or give like a really good poker face right now, I got you. Like, no, no one's going to know what the hell. You only have to turn one I way. Know, in order. I'm doing <laughs> one way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was, I was sharing to Facebook the link. Um, You guys, if you're watching, please share it around. Let people know that we're on. Give it a like, et cetera. You know, the whole like spiel. Do the right. things. Don't make me do this. Things over you know the truth. Yeah. For real. Um, but anyway, so we're reviewing season two. Now, last week when we talked about it, yes. um, we knew that this season, a lot of the um commentary about it going in was that it would feel rushed or there wasn't enough character development, which mm-hmm. are like some of the critiques that we heard. Um yeah. right I off the bat, agree. like, how are you feeling about that? I don't agree. Neither do I. I don't agree. But the video that I sent you earlier today, check your messenger, um, has to do with somebody. No, I, uh, saw, somebody I, had, I saw that you sent it. I didn't get to watch it. That's okay. Um, this gal had know? read all of the books. So she understood that season two was actually three books worth. And that's where they're coming from. That's oh. three books worth that we just watched. Um, so it was the first that and then the, more the other three. And then they start going off on their um, side situations. So so there's that. So they had felt that it was a little bit rushed. Um, the whole relationship between Cass and the other kind of mobster guy was apparently very rushed. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there it was quite a bit of character development. I'm going to be honest with y'all people. I fell asleep yeah. in the second to the last episode. <laughs> I have to go back and I have to watch the rest. So I did not see, see the epic battle scene. I think I got right up to it and went and snored is what happened. It is what it is. Yeah. You were pretty window. close to me where you stopped. Okay. You were pretty close to it, yeah. Okay, um, all right. No, uh, I I'll also go. disagree. Mm-hmm. I also disagree. I liked a lot of the character development. I felt like they, the only thing that I would say felt a little rushed, and it makes sense knowing that it was three books, 
is the very last episode. They had things happen in a a nutshell, like they they wrap things up in a bow, mm-hmm. and they spent like they wrap things up in a bow, like the actual quest, right? Within right. like the first maybe twenty minutes, and then the <laughs> rest of the episode, maybe even fifteen, the rest of the episode mm-hmm. was like more about and this is how so and so went on like you know after you watch like an intervention show or something and they're mm-hmm. like you know five years later anthony still hasn't gotten clean like that kind of thing like <laughs> they were doing that with all of the different characters basically and i was Ooh. like well i mean if you suddenly know that you're not going to have another season right this is a good way to give the viewers some kind of wrap up on their favorite characters because but everyone has a thing. different favorite okay and has questions well, then let me interrupt you because they didn't know at the end of this season and while they were filming, they Ooh. did not know. In fact, there was a hiring of um, several different writers in regards to, like, again, the video I sent you, check your messenger. Uh-huh. Um, so there were several different writers working on the offshoots of the other things that they had already had signed some sort of deal with Netflix for five total seasons. So there was going to be the three that has to do with that. And then they were going off on the offshoots for, yeah. for the other two. That so makes sense they too, did I not like, it's almost like they were preparing for other stories that were not this season. Correct. So, so that's like what spin-off. they were setting up for. That's what they were setting up for. So that makes sense. Everybody, including the writers and the actors, right now have a current. Um, we gotta we gotta research this. We gotta find where this link is. But they're trying mm-hmm. to make sure that Netflix brings it back. It was Netflix mm-hmm. that basically pulled some sort of weird power move on that, saying that it had to do with the Actors Guild and all this ah. other stuff and what they were doing. Not that yeah. there was a war in Russia um and all that other stuff so it had nothing to do with it and the actors themselves oh. as well as the writers said no no we're here and yeah. we're good what are you doing yeah. netflix just shut them down and so now wow. the actors and the writers are all hella pissed and trying to get it all back they're like yeah. you did not take and hire me and do all this stuff for all this time and then you're just going to leave us it on our heads. Really like good. This. I want more. I think it's a big mistake. It won an Emmy. It won an Emmy yeah. for um special I think effects. It's a big mistake. Um, like if you and- guys are watching this, like take that like five stars on the season of last last week, uh-huh. and like go forward and give them hell. Like really, give them it's hell. Really good. I want more. I want spinoffs. Mm-hmm. I want merch. I want fucking yep. all of it. I want merch. I need a Grisha shirt. <laughs> I need a Grisha shirt. I need more Tamar. <laughs> I fucking love Tamar. <laughs> love it. Love it too. Yeah. Yes. No, that is the thing. So, um, yeah, they're trying. They're trying hard to uh, get it back, and hopefully that they will. But um, a- apparently Netflix is the villain, and has been doing it a lot with these with all different mm-hmm. kinds of shows. Um, the season one actually had super duper duper top ratings. And in that video, check your messenger. Um, they even talk about how the ratings were going for season two because it was really anticipated by yeah. fan favorites. Yeah. And um, sure enough, it was doing well. It won an Emmy for um, special effects, like when she's doing her light, you know, yeah. and it starts, it's you know, really starts good. Doom, doom. Um, all that we other stuff. About that and, last week is like the special yeah. effects were really tasteful really good. and like mm-hmm. really good they're decent they're really decent they're really yeah. really good mm-hmm. yeah so netflix is bad <laughs> netflix is bad that's what they're saying something else of note that's mm-hmm. interesting that i learned today mm-hmm. jesse may lee who is the one who plays alina starkov the main oh, okay. uh the main girl mm-hmm is actually gender non-conforming and is uh Ooh. prefers the pronouns she they she they um, which i didn't know also um jesse has adhd so she is of the neurodivergent clan um okay. and also um so you know how in it they're like oh well the character's half shoe mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. like china for the mm-hmm. you know because like they have like russia and china and yeah so mm-hmm. 
Um, and the Gemini, I think we're supposed to be African, perhaps, or like Ooh. Haitian or something. I'm not sure, but there's something in that area of things too. Okay. Um, because the the Nova Zem, where they go, there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but each town has kind of their own thing, and then like you know, the white folks is like London, basically. <laughs> it's like London. Jack the Ripper, London, steampunkish. Yeah. Um, but Ketterdam, but mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, no, I, I found that out and I thought that was really interesting. Um, but also that, what was it? What was I going to say? Fuck, I'm trying to remember. There's what is that? Another, what is another kit. What um, something that I, I figured out too is that, like, I have a theory that Jesper, because they show, I know, Jesper, um, they show. Uh, where they go to Shu Han, Shu mm -hmm. Han, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. Um, where they go to Shu Han. Oh, that was the fact I was gonna say. Shu Han is based on China, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jesse Lee May or Jesse May Lee, sorry, Jesse May Lee is actually uh, her mother, their mother, sorry, their mother is um, English, white, and then their father is Chinese and from Hong Kong. So mm -hmm. the representation of what the character is supposed to be is actually like legit what Jesse is. That's amazing. Yeah, which That's I amazing. thought was really cool. Like it was like, no, this is an accurate portrayal of someone who is sort of mixed descent. And, you know, that a lot of times you get one or the other that they lean, but not uh -huh. someone who is actually both. And the fact that they they got her that gave her that role and that you know she got that role, but she got it and is literally the descent of that character is just really cool to me because that's it's something American. that you don't always come across. So like that's that's a positive thing in the land of Hollywood, basically. It is. Me. It is. I, I have been called out for my my pizza. This is the cozies. Uh -oh. Um um, this is uh, Cozy's Pizza. Cozy's is a little place here on the island right when you get off the ferry. And it was here before any of the cities were here. So when it was just like a little oh. port, that's where they fed the um, the seamen, if you will. It okay, this good. is their um, potato and the yeah. sailors. The sailors. This is the potato pizza. It has olives and cheese. Um, normally it comes with bacon and chives on it, but I've gone veg. So um, it has a sour cream layer under Ooh. here. Like, mm, with with it's potatoes? So yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, if I peel back, you're going to see some sour cream up in there. Ooh. It's yeah. delicious. And that looks like some dense cheese on top, too, which is Oh, nice. it's so good. And then yep. I got a little side of ranch to that. chomp. That's that's what's for dinner. That sounds great. It's like a loaded potato pizza almost. It is a loaded potato pizza. That's, that's exactly what it is. And at the same yeah. place, anybody who comes to the island and I take you to Cozy's, make sure you get their macaroni and cheese nugget bites. Because they take these little macaroni and cheese mm. wads and then roll them up and then fry them. It's so bad for you. My heart. I want to appreciate so good. that. You couldn't say nugget bites without stank facing it because you like it so much. So good. That's so good. You were like mac and cheese <laughs> nugget bites. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> so delish. Yes. So happy oh, Friday. Hey, Dottie. So good for foods. Yeah, you I saw Dottie. Nice. Saw Dottie in there. Uh, yes, yeah. twice baked potato pizza. Kind of, yes. Hey, That's I'm exactly what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never thought of putting potato on pizza, but that sounds great. It's a, it's an Irish. Yes. It's an um, Irish pizza. Okay, so like. Mm -hmm. So oh, th this whole thing was about her destroying the fold, yes. right? Mm -hmm. This is That's all about message. Alina getting into, uh, uh, trying to take on the other um elements or amplifiers so she's going after um c whip is it c whip c whip, the c -whip. And the yeah because we've already got mm -hmm. we have the stag from first season Beautiful. now there's there's the c whip and the firebird uh-huh and the c whip um is like this i thought it was going to be an octopus but it's not it's like this kind of dragony guy with tendrils 
I know. I was not like expecting to see what looked the way she looked. I, yeah. You Which thought I'm it was kind of like, you know. Oh. Was it? What did he mm -mm. He's over here talking. <laughs> Bear but has I opinions. It's like a. Like, I mean, it's like a blend of animals, I would think, but like its face and stuff was very dragony, almost like yes. um, like a wyvern or something, a wyvern, where like they don't have mm -hmm. like the body, like the, mm -hmm. you know, the land body, if you will. They uh -huh. have more of a snake like body, but mm -hmm. like it seemed like it had more than one tendril, or at least because we didn't really see it in its entirety ever mm -hmm. because it was always kind of half under the water. Well, it up on the rock. Exactly, legless. Like, yes, too. like like yeah. uh, like a wyvern or something. Like a um um, is that the word I'm thinking of? The worm, the dragons that just don't have any. Mm -hmm. Which honestly, that's very kind of like like the Chinese dragons almost. Mm -hmm. Like some of mm -hmm. them don't. They're just like the face with the long body. Mm -hmm. And um, and I didn't expect that with this, but that's cool. I personally would have liked a little more like story in terms of the bonding or fusing with the energy of the sea whip i think that was the only thing in the whole show that i was like oh that's it okay <laughs> because there was so much bonding with the stag and build up and even the firebird once we get right. to that had a lot of that too but the sea mm -hmm. whip was like a blip on the marker like nope i don't like you i'm gonna kill you oh zoom through your eye and we're done and right then here's some scales and we're channeling it and it's it's done automatically to that. And I would have like seaweed. maybe a little more yeah. A little more from the spirit of the sea whip in terms of input, I guess, yeah. on that. Like like you were a good challenger, maybe, and like and you got me, and so that I'm giving my power over to you because it's happening any fucking way. Um, right. or maybe like, you know, just like I I would have liked more through the eyes of that, just like they did with the stag. And cool. even the Firebird later, we had mm -hmm. more time on that, too, where, like, we got to see sort of oh, yeah. the, the giving over of that energy from that being, right? Yes. Which and the stag did, too. Yeah. I feel C like the Sea Whip didn't get that. Sea Whip didn't get that, but Sea Whip was grouchy. Like, let's be honest. Sea Whip's a little grouchy. Get it? Because he's in the sea, he's salty. It's a salty Sea Whip. <laughs> Salty sea whip. Jokes. Jokes. Salty sea uh, whip. So that's, that's um, that. But you know what? Actually, you might be onto something there because. Uh huh. And maybe it's written in the books because that makes me, if they shoved all three into this, that makes me want to read all three of the uh -huh. ones and see what was left out. But that makes me wonder something because at that point, Alina was still semi linked to the Darkling. And she had a lot of rage. Like there's even moments where they talk about that, where the yep. rage and sort of the unbridled power or chaos, I think they described it as, um, was hard for her to control. I mean, even when she first got the power of the sea whip, um, the one who came and grounded her and kept her from just losing her shit was Mal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so maybe there was more in the book about the fact that like this sea whip and the rage and the anger and like the aggression there, I guess, um, mm. more so aggression. Um, and that like independence, that fierce independence that the sea whip has, uh -huh. maybe that is part of the story in Alina's thing, because she was feeling that too, in terms of her power being taken. Cause I mean, really like it's sort of an allegory for rape on a lot of levels with him just like taking her power like that and like an intimate moment like and even like to the point that it changed her body watch the right? video because they talk about that in regards to and so, also in the books he snuck up on her in a more devious way than what was presented in oh season two so it was pretty really? dastardly okay. in how he infiltrated her um and they kind of gave a very pg-13 version of what had happened yeah. in regards to her him coming yeah. and infiltrating I mean, like, her i don't want like to yeah well and he did do that a lot in it i mean it just was very mm -hmm. insidious but i don't want to like you know focus too much on that because i don't want anybody to get triggered or anything but like that sort of example of like this invasiveness of taking someone's power over and changing their body to that point. Yeah. Like there is a moment of like rage 
utter powerlessness mm-hmm. that goes into power. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if the sea whip was really that, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that her experience with where she was combined with the sea whips, also aggression merged and made that even mag- magnified. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause if they're magnifiers, they're mm-hmm. essentially just going to blow up whatever you have. Pretty much. So maybe it wasn't just the energy. I mean, thought is energy too. Right. So, you know, um, so maybe that is more like, I've always wondered if there is more to it in the books with that than Uh what they showed in the season two, which understandably, like they had a lot of characters and a lot of things going on um, to get there. Right. Yeah. But yeah. What do we think? What I want to know, what do we think of uh, Stormhand, um, uh, Stormhand and, and, and the, uh, the prince that becomes king eventually? Um, oh, I lost you. There you go. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, again, retrograde be retrograde It's not fun Hard. time around. Um, for sure. It's definitely in earth signs are just having issues. Um, <laughs> earth signs and water signs unite. <laughs> We're going to be mud together. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We're going to make it. Um, I am both. <laughs> same. Um, so, yes. You know what? I I didn't care for him in just season dropping one. Just dropping everywhere. What was that? Oh, you just dropped yeah. I, I thought I I'm just dropping like coleslaw everywhere. Because I can't, I can't seal one side of my face. You got to put it in and then you're just going to. Have you ever. Uh, have you ever watched? Hold on, literally. Have you ever watched Christmas with the Cranks? Yes, with Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, somebody okay. too much Botox. Do you know the scene where he gets the Botox yes. and he can't eat the Jello or the the fruit, and it just like falls out of his fucking? That's what I feel like right now, all the time. <laughs> I feel like Tim Allen, who just got Botox and is like trying to have a casual conversation, but everything is just can't do it. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis is just looking at us like, what are you doing? Oh I know that was conceived. That was a good scene. Um, yeah, and she's okay. just like, why? What are you doing? What did you what do this for? In regards to the privateer, or what is it? Privateer? What do they call it? Um, yeah. Privateer. In regards to the privateer. He's a privateer. Um, you know, I didn't really care for him in season one because I'm like, what is going on here? Actually, he I guess it is season two that it all happens. <laughs> it all does. I'm like, God, I just switched that up. Okay, so yeah, I didn't like him in the beginning. And then he well, just he starts to grow on. Well, he appears before we fully know. Well, he appears before we fully know, like, well, his purpose is. Oh, yes. Right. I know. He seemed, you know, like you know not. Jasper and Kaz. Right. He didn't seem like good people, yeah. you know, in the beginning. Now, his brother, we can talk about his brother. What? Gross. He's gross. Oh my God, That's for sure. But, a shower. Oh, uh, yuck. <laughs> um, but I, like, still just didn't understand, and it took me a minute. To, I'm just like, wait a minute. This brother, is the king's son. Brother, son. Brother, both need to take a bath. Oh, but don't you love the way, um, um, is it Jenna? Who is it? Genya. The one with the red hair that, you know, is the healer that Genya. Uh, Genya. I Genya. love the way she talks to the queen when she is just like, ask me why I did it. Um, yes. yes. Look. I'm like, get it. Genya I like, it. is like a real badass. I think yes, people are is. sleeping on that. Genya has been a badass the entire time and she's she a tailor, has. which is uh-huh. not one of the more like combative kind of gifts. Mm-mm. But like more of a healer and a glamour mm-hmm. person, mm-hmm. Um, an illusionist, and uh, and like Jenya's a badass though. Like mm-hmm. guys, <laughs> badassery. Also, Genya. like she has just gotten. I remember I was watching it, and after things happened to David and stuff, and she found finds the plans that he had for making a ring uh, with a, a ruby in it because there's a whole conversation with them about a stone. Um, and she just loses her shit. And I'm just like, man, she just can't win for losing. Like, this entire, like, show is just like, let's shit on Jinya. Like, the entire time, mm-hmm. Jinya just has a rough day. Mm-hmm. Every day. 
Yes, she does. Sweet thing. Oh, man. I thought for the longest time she was an Olsen. And I'm like, is she related to those Olsen girls? So <laughs> did I. I thought for sure. I looked it up even. I was like, I did is, too. is there an Olsen in this? I'm like, there is Olsen? not. She is I'm not. Like, hmm. You're giving me the red witch right now. You're giving you're giving me the scarlet witch. Well, like I know. Hmm? Yes. I also like yes. her. And yep. she's got, mm -hmm. you know, the big eyes and the very full lips. Yep. Yeah. Looks absolutely. Olsen, Olsen esque. Um Mm -hmm. I love Virginia. Virginia's great. Mm -hmm. Um, I also liked seeing the crows with Nina involved and Wylan in it and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I I loved their little band that had like grown. And in, um I'm actually reading um The Six of Crows now. Oh, um, are you? And like we're uh -huh. like we're about to, yeah, yeah, we started it. <laughs> um and it and it like it's basically based on the crows so like i'm huh. excited about that because i i fucking adore them they're great you know well, you should be really upset you should be really upset because that was the first thing that the writers were told to do so there is a whole script written in regards to the six of crows and that was what was next well, the writers are so bad bring that out damn it i know damn it yeah. Look, we're out here. Netflix, listen to me. First, let me light, light this off my tongue. Oh, my finger. Netflix. Netflix, listen to me. We are out here reviewing your shit. Uh huh. Brand new cherry flavor got a five from me. Yeah. This got a five from me. Uh -huh. What the fuck are you doing? Stop wasting your time with all these other things. Because some some Netflix series are bombs. Big bombs. Big bombs. These Big are really bomb. fucking good. Half bad. Where are you? Come on. Where are like, you? These are really good. They are forward thinking. Like, what? what is life? Stop it. Stop, Stop. it. Netflix, come here. Come closer. Come. Stop Just, it. Wait. Bring your head over here. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Enough. Stop. Stop bringing us in and getting I'm us so all annoyed. emotionally invested in these characters, and then just leaving us like this. This stinks. So, I'm like, and that's it. The end. Yeah. Also, yeah. for the record. Yes. Record. Let's carry it further. Okay. My writers out there that love to write fan fiction. I'm looking for y'all then. If they don't want to release this, then I will totally start reading fan fiction spinoffs. I'm not above it. Same. So if y'all are really upset about mm -hmm. it, like start slipping that shit out there and I will read that too. Like it does not mm -hmm. have to end here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just, I, yeah, that is so mm -hmm. upsetting. The crows, it's such. Yeah. Also, I, like I got a witchy cruise. I got a witchy like, cruise yeah. coming up next week. I got I, next Saturday, not this, not tomorrow, but next Saturday, I'm going to be headed to Mexico on a cruise with Kim. And what's going to be in my ears? Yeah. This book. Books. Yes. As I should say. So like, mm -hmm. I wonder I how many I can get through I on a cruise. <laughs> hmm. I need more. And here's the thing if you don't want, a sea of fan fictions taking your money for you, Netflix. Yeah. Then you should come, make a fucking season. Come you get your make money. Make a series spinoff, whatever you gotta do. Make do a couple of them. Make it do a whole the fucking market. Yep. Like because see? this is this is fan fiction worthy. Yeah. This is fan yeah, fiction worthy. Right yeah. This like, is right up there with um I, I I'm gonna say it like Stranger Things. Like, look, isn't that a yeah. Netflix original as well? Stranger Things. And they did a tour, mm -hmm. they did all nice. kinds of stuff. I mean, I took uh, Nathan and Anthony and Bear uh, I think back in August for Anthony's birthday to go to have a Stranger Things experience, you know, so we can go through the thing and do the stuff and let us out to the whole merch situation and you know, got Chips Ahoy and did the whole thing. Like, it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> this is your opportunity to basically have your own Harry mm -hmm. Potter situation and you messing it up. And that's the thing. It's giving me Harry Potter, but, like, minus the turf. Um, it's giving yeah. me, like, like that, like, you know, the different worlds within one world. It's so immersive. And the, and the potential 
for yes. that is there. Yes. And it is so frustrating that it got dropped because they could easily do that. Yeah, I'm I'm even going to say like more fantastic beasts because it's more adult driven than it is children in school. Mm -hmm. um, that is a thing, but more fantastic yeah. beasts mixed with, mix with a little Game of Thrones and some Lord of the Rings. What y'all doing? Come and, and get it. Also, there's steampunk. There's steampunk elements. Well, there's also steam like the fact that there's, I think it was six regions and all of them have this different aesthetic that goes with it and different culture around it and everything. Yep, yep, yep. Like there are so many different things that you can do and create and come from that world. And, mm -hmm. and also the fact that like London essentially in, in like, you know, like Jack the Ripper essentially at times can mm -hmm. exist in this with steampunk vibes alongside of like this game of thrones like we're wearing tunics and fur cloaks kind of shit alongside of um you know this russian sort of empire th like these are not all the same time guys <laughs> but yet it works it merges together so well mm -hmm. and adds to the fantasy effect of like where are you though you know yeah, yeah. um it just is so clever it's so, so clever it's so good. I mean, I know that there's not very many people in the chat that are watching these or reading these. Um, I appreciate those of you that have, but I mean, please get on out there. If you're looking for some something good to yeah. watch, it will grip you and it will grip you quickly. It's not one of those that are like, how long do I got to wait until something like really happens here? It's like episode one. Boom. Especially in season two. Season two was like, boom, 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 boom. boom and it boom, wasn't boom. like, boom, boom, boom in a rushed way. But it was like a, like just action packed. Like there was, mm -hmm. you know, and you think you're safe and then here's another thing. And then that's, oh, and here's another thing. And like, it was just bomb after bomb happening and being dropped in mm -hmm. a good sense. And so honestly, when, when we were talking about like going into it with, oh, it seems rushed and there wasn't a lot of character development. I'm like, no, this just means it, this just feels action packed. Like what I likened it to is you remember the Lord of the Rings videos that came out, the movies, the trilogy. So mm -hmm. one of them has to like set the stage and give a lot of backstory and da da da. And then there's one that is like just all battles basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's because we've already set the stage for everything else. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that you go into battle mode. What is happening here? What is about that? And <laughs> That to me is what it felt like. It felt like, look, we've already set the scene for you guys in the first one. We don't really need to do that. You already know the nature generally of these characters. So we're just going to jump in and throw you in the chaos and you can see how they're dealing with it and why they're dealing with it that way from the background we've already kind of given you. Mm -hmm. And then how they're like, this one was more about the relationships to each other than learning the character. And I can see how some people might have thought that that was lacking character development, but I disagree. I think character development happens in the relations to each other. I think that they established the character in the first season mm -hmm. and then showed the dynamics that how the character was actively growing with one another, with each other, with their situations, um, how the crows work together for something, you know, like that kind of thing. Or even yeah. in the battle at the end, you know, they were showing like the the Grisha that were with the Darkling being these super powerful ones because they had this infusion of uh, uh, Bagra's um, power. Okay, that that's exciting. That's a whole again, thing. That you probably again, I fell asleep. But, I gotta but, go. I gotta watch it after this. I gotta go. But watch it after they this. were they were showing them. They were showing them as like, how are they so fucking powerful, right? But then the power that the other side had that Alina and all of them had is they were all completely different. They all had completely different talents and skills, etc. But when they formed together, like literally, like they there was an attack at one point where um Wylan had poison that he had brought and he said, I need air assistance, and he threw it up in the air, and one of the uh squallers pushed it forward and aimed it right at the person where they inhaled I it. I saw a clip of that. And I then saw a there clip was one where like um yeah, yeah, like they worked together a lot. Um and it was just really I it liked that they be. were like, yes, you could have raw power, which is like the darkling. You could have raw power, but and you will stand alone. Right. And you know, that's that's powerful, 
Or you could work together and be just as strong, if not stronger, by embracing these different, you know, the diversities of each other and your skills and stuff and working together in that way. Mm -hmm. And that was just a really good message that was sort of a subliminal thing, but it was the representation, like the armies were the representation of their leaders. The Darkling being very much of like, no, we are an individual and we must, you know, power must be obsolete or, or um, absolute, sorry. Power must absolute. be like, you know, I have all of it. If there is power, I need it. That's why Alina can't exist alongside me in that way unless I have power over her. Right. Mm -hmm. But Alina was like, no, 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 we could have been equals. We could have been equals and we could have worked together. But you had to be the one who was the top dog. You had to do that. And so it shows the two mind frames, even in how their armies fought at the end. Ah. And I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> now, question for you. But question for you. It's an example of character design. Question for you is, do you feel that Alina now have taken in all of this power, right? Is she going to now mm -hmm. just become the Darkling? Because you saw, you know, now she's got yes. a little bit mm -hmm. of him. Like, now it's too much yeah, power. I think, I think that she's going to play with that and test it. And um, okay. I don't know. She may, she may not. Um, but I'm hoping she keeps that mama safe and close because I think that she could really learn a yeah. lot, you know, where, Bagra? um, Bagra, I Bagra, think that if, Bagra, yes. baby, Bagra's dead. Bagra's dead. Bagra's dead. No spoilers here. <laughs> I don't know. Bagra's dead. Man, I was even going to go off a thing. Oh, she did. Bagra okay. killed herself, essentially, um, in front of her son, the Darkling. Really? Um, is this all? Yes, the because uh, there's a lot of She didn't in the want last him episode. to use my her to get to them. Now in my doorway, shaving. This is the last the episode, look. dude. This is when. Do you know who the Firebird is? Yes, I do. It's a mammal. See, I know something. You, you woke up for that moment. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, so. Judgment. <laughs> okay, so how Mal knows is Bagra. And in that episode, I'm pretty sure, if not the very next one, the Darkling comes for them. Okay. And that tomb where, you know, he figures out that, like, you know, the, the, um, the Orostav or whatever tomb, like the Bagra's family tomb. I know um, of it. That's where he came as a little Mal kid, right? Him because he can open it with blood. Okay. Yeah, but he can open it with blood. No, Mal. Mal can. Mal and can. Because that's he's because Mal cousin. is their cousin. Mal, yes, he's there's like a whole cousin. fucking thing about it. Right, right, right. Yes, because he is he is the reincarnated, like essentially spirit of I think it's her sister or something. Something um, like that. And that's why they like have the whole thing. discussion. But, they got the whole discussion is whether or not they're really in love with each other or was this just destined because yes, but this needed to part happen of anyway. that, right. But part of that, that I'm getting to, to try to tell you is at one point they know that the darkling is doing that mind meld shit and trying mm -hmm. to see, to see what's mm -hmm. going on and find out. Mm -hmm. And Alina and him are talking and Alina is trying to overpower or whatever. And what happens is Bagra switches out with her so that she's in place of Alina oh. in this astral space so that oh. Mal can get Alina out of that tomb. They've gotcha. already set the tomb on fire because they oh. don't want the Darkling to be able to see the blueprints and all of the information from Morisov. Okay, okay, so okay. So they burnt it all and Bagra is in that tomb as as Mal closes the door on her with his blood oh, and gets Lena out of there. And then in astral space, Bagra kills herself with her son so that he can't use her to see what happened and see like all, you know, all the shit and, and, and see the information and stuff. Like he, she doesn't want him to get that. So she sacrifices herself. What episode is this? To buy them time. I need to go it's back. Like I right know what I'm doing for the rest of the evening. 
I'm, I know what exactly <laughs> I'm doing for the rest of this evening. Okay, well, I apologize. I apologize, people. I watched a recap today. I watched <laughs> two of them because I'm like, I failed. I you failed were like, she needs nothing. to keep back or close. And I was like, in the spirit realm? In the spirit realm. Well, maybe there is a thing for the spirit realm. I just thought, well, you know, yeah, hey, she does. She cuts this off. Would be an opportunity for Alina to learn the things that the Darkling never yeah. learned. So that, you know, the thing. That's how Vagra, that's what Vagra does. She severs the Darkling's hand, cuts it off, chop, and chop. dies because the oh. hand that had the antler embedded in it still yeah. has tendrils of Alina's power. So she that's chops right. it off. That's the because tether. She can do the cut. She chops it off and kills herself, essentially. Because here's the thing. I guess what happens is she doesn't like kill herself with her own power. What happens is is the uh the what are, what are they called? The Ichinov or whatever, the nothings, the, the yes, demons yes, that yes. he has, the shadow demons. The crazy weirdos. Yes. Anytime he's attacked, he can't control them. They just yeah. start attacking other people that are hurting him, right? Yeah. Protect and him, he's he really the one that's holding them back. She he's not really off in control. She's not. She, no. He she chopped off his hand and so they killed her. Oh. That's what happened. She knew okay. it and did it anyway so that Alina could have full power to herself. Okay, is that why That's in the happened. recap that Alina and all of them had to burn the darkling because they weren't like messing around and they're like we're we're burning them down. Cuz they didn't want any also side note, let's have a death midwife tidbit here. Okay. Bear says the last like scene, though. Oh my! Which means you watched the whole thing without me. I was not. I was asleep <laughs> in bed. Asleep. Listen, guys. Listen, 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 listen. Let's have a moment. I have a little factoid as a death midwife. Okay, go for it. The funeral pyre that they burned yes. his body on—that was built out of like wood—and they mm -hmm. just set some torches in it—is mm -hmm. not hot enough. To burn a body to the point where nothing exists. Yeah. There would have been things still left of his body. Mm -hmm. It's not hot enough. Like a, no. a cremation place it has to be extremely hot. And it also has to happen very fast. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> so um, they're like using all this conversation about like, oh, nothing must be less of him. No one can find it. And I'm like, then we probably shouldn't use this method, guys. <laughs> probably not that's funny okay now i'm gonna watch that and chuckle that, like not a lot of people know is actually that doesn't get rid of everything you know what i love i don't think for any other series other than brand new cherry flavor have we been like this convicted about it like we are like mm -hmm. in it people we like yeah. it you don't even have to guess what our pentacles what are it's good no it's 10. Okay. I give 10 pinnacles. 10. 10 pinnacles for me too. <laughs> 10. It's great. 10 pinnacles. And I, Netflix, I give zero. Zero for discontinuing zero this. Zero. Um, you know what? Fucking this good. show. Also, if that's the case, somebody else pick it up then. If Netflix doesn't fucking want it anymore, somebody else tweak, tweak a spinoff or something and pick it up. Do what you, you know what? Well, Paramount, we're calling you because Paramount is considering taking up half bad. Save because us all. of this situation. <laughs> yeah, save us all, please. This this is a thing. I can't read every book out there. I can't. <laughs> I may need to. It's easier for me to just take it in with my eyeballs. With my eyeballs. Anywho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> strap issues okay oh, yes yeah well, i just it's yeah. disappointing yeah oh bear gives a let's see oh five bacons and, and a biscuit all right all right That's solid that That's is solid. solid that is solid yeah i just but, yeah also who team mal yeah team, team mal. mal team nina <laughs> Team Anita. You know what? I love Anita, and I know that she did I a little bit Anita. of shady stuff here, you know, in this one, yeah. but it was for love Nina and is... she was threatened. And I, I like Nina. Nina I like is Nina what I would call like a chaotic neutral character, perhaps, or like like a like a chaotic good, even perhaps, but I would uh -huh. say neutral, chaotic neutral. Um, because Nina, like 
I think like she wants the best in her heart, but she has done some shit, man, has and has no shit. problem being more about survival than anything yep. else. Um, she's had to be. She's had to be. Yeah, exactly. And I think also Nina is like, she has so much swagger and um, like the charisma. And mm. it's like even at one point where they're they're talking about you know how they're gonna get in and find like um, Pecker's books and you know booksman and stuff like that his accountant yeah. and like she just goes to the bar and like sweet talks the barmaid and then gets the the answer and knows exactly yeah, her, where she waffles she's got a waffle meanwhile, fixation right, she's just like, like, like they're trying to make this grand plan and shit and she just comes back and solves it for them. She's and like, like I love the stairs, third door to the left. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, what? Right. She's an excellent crow. She is an excellent yeah. addition to the crows. She is. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, yeah, I absolutely, I love it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's, she fits right in. She does. Now, how do you feel about her and her love and the way it ended? Because I, I, um, yeah. I wanted more. I wanted to see more of their story. Um, yeah. You know, I I have a feeling, I hope, mm -hmm. that, like, they do eventually get him out and, like, he becomes part of the Crows, too. Right? Ooh, that would be good. Because, like, think about it. Like, he's also excommunicated from his people now. He is. He can't he go is. back. And the Crows yeah. are all about, like, you know, like, we are the outcasts and so we love ourselves like we are we are we are family because no one else will be our family and we are we are chosen family it's they almost are, kind of like lgbt ish like like we is. have this been disowned and don't fit into uh, so yeah. many places but like we are our family now family is chosen yeah. it is the island of misfit respect. toy for sure it is the yeah. island of misfit toys yes. yeah and mm -hmm. I, I mean even to the point where kaz at the end of season one you know, Inej is like, well, what do you believe in? Because Inej, you know, believes in her faith and the saints mm -hmm. and et cetera, you know, and um, Sante, Sancte Elena. And um, and he just says, I believe in you and Jasper. I believe mm -hmm. in my crows. Yeah. You know, and like that just says a lot for that. And so I think um, they are, they're, they're such like a, they've been kicked around and beat up and, and pushed out and, mm -hmm. you know, but they have each other. And they have each other. I, yeah, I just, I love the crows. I love them. I love them too. I love them and too. And even They're the wonderful. animal, the representation of that. Yeah. Is really appropriate. Like mm -hmm. from a witch's standpoint, right? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. crows, magpies, like they mm -hmm. are ooh, shiny, like Kaz's obsession with money. Mm -hmm. Um, but they also like they just collect anything that they see that they like, and that includes people too. That includes people. Like Alina is kind of unofficially a crow, right? Like, yeah, they yeah. they just fuck them up. Yeah, and um, you know, if you have a use for me, I have a use for you, and let's go, let's work together. Um, I, know. I so like I just, it. I wish wish all relationships were that simple, honestly. You know, hey, yeah. Like I oh. I I am upset that there is not a spinoff of this. Like, it would be so good. It would be so good. I don't think that but anybody is going to let this back. I love that they showed him with his wolves. Yes. Because of Jell, which, uh, Jell, okay, so for those of you, so Matthias is basically like Norse, for lack mm -hmm. of a, another, he's a yeah. Norseman. That's yeah. kind of what um, the Druskella come from. Um, the Druskella are like um, witch hunters. They 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 hunt Grishas, and yes, Nina is a Grisha. Um, a Druska, I believe, or Druji, something like that, is the word for them that they use. But um, he so so the hunters of Grisha in his country are spiritual hunters. They see that is like like a spiritual like puritism kind of thing, like. Like the Grisha are sin and they're wiping it clean by getting rid of them in the name of Jell, right? But now he has found her and they got along a lot. And so there was like this, I think he's having a crisis of faith a bit <clears throat> because Jell is anti-Grisha as he knows it. But also um, you see him in the prison, like leaning very heavily into 
his faith and drawing sigils on the ground and and you know doing prayers and etc and then they put him in to fight these wolves and wolves are sacred to gel and he will not fight them and so instead he kneels and they fucking come up and stand behind him like at his side mm -hmm. and i want to see more of that because i have a suspicion that that is just the beginning of the like fucking druidic move power that he has if you get what i'm saying like fucking yeah. team druid with my my peoples yes. I'm keeping dice for different lives on all of my animals to follow me around like yeah. i like i think that matthias on top of being a big motherfucker fights with the wolves and the wolves yes. aren't his the wolves are friends the wolves are comrades check your messenger the video talks about that <clears throat> and like I think you're that gonna love these books. We're gonna love these having, books like, so much. <laughs> this crisis of faith with things, and so I think that that's something that, like, again, character development. Like, we, of mm -hmm. course, he's gonna be pissed. Do you see where he is? He doesn't know any of what's going on outside of that. Right. Right. Like, yeah, I'd be furious if I thought like no one was. You're just gonna come see me fight. You're gonna show up and yell my name and see me fight from the other side of the bars, but then disappear and not do shit. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna mm -hmm. say that you lied, and that's the reason I'm in here. Like right, you have all these chances, but you want to show up and watch me fight. Like, he doesn't know what's going on with Nina. Right, he doesn't understand. He does not understand it. He doesn't. You know what? Honestly, he's he's a great big, huge, you know, lump of a guy. But he's yeah. been very sheltered in regards to his worldly expertise. He doesn't have a whole lot of that. Yeah. She definitely does, and understands the more of the inner workings on just some social engagement i mean she's got it she's got charisma 19 and he's got charisma 5. i mean that's really how this goes with this poor guy and he's just very simple and he doesn't understand and there's always there's also a language barrier for him and you know some other things he hasn't gotten yeah. around and so he is just stuck he is just he stuck knows in his this country. Place. that's it he knows That's his country. He knows, and he knows his what's people. Told to him. That's it. And he's now finally getting kind of culture shock with stuff. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Culture shock. He's getting culture shock from yeah. jail of all places. Yes. Oh, and a not a great one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Pekka mm -hmm. comes in and makes it worse. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. So no, I, I really like Matthias and I like Nina and I like their their story together. Um I wish we had had more of a summary of that, but um, again, it makes sense that they were making like spinoffs for it. And like, to me, I'm like, oh my God, there's so many books that could come from this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but, or like Mal, Mal became um, a fucking captain, a captain. He took uh, yes. Stormont's um, place he did. and name and essentially went sailing because I love that when they brought Mal back, mm -hmm. Mal was like, I used to have a true north. I used to be your true north, but I don't know what north is anymore. Like mm -hmm. my purpose is gone. So I don't know what my purpose now is. And she's I marrying this other guy. Right. And so, yeah. well, she gave him his ring back. So I don't really know if that's still happening, but then they continued and she's kept doing it. So I don't know. Um, I was crown like, crown oh, so we are married. Okay. There's a crown. There's a crown. Yeah. On her head. No, they do it later. And yes, but what I'm, or they don't do it, but yeah, that, that is later. But there's a point in the story where like she gives his shit back and is like, I can't do this. And he goes, I can respect that uh, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. But then we see in the end that like she does. So, you know, and then Mal goes fucking sailing. Yep. With one of the crows. Yes. With an A. Mm -hmm. Who looks so at home on that pirate ship. Yes, she does. Looks so at home. <laughs> I was very pumped for that. It's really good. Um, yeah, and and Tamar, I fucking love Tamar and uh, Tolia, uh, the brother and sister. They're great. Yeah, they are fantastic. They are fantastic. I understand that the brother does all of his own stunts and has his own Instagram. So oh. that video that I sent you, she follows yeah. him and is like a huge fan of his. So very exciting. And he has the eyes out for Miss Thing as well. Oh. Who's looking for her brother? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's another love triangle happening up in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Towards mm -hmm. the very end, you see that when she comes to board the boat. 
he's like, hey, what's it happening? Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Also, let's talk about Kaz and Inej and like their I, last moment together. Let's talk I, about I, that I, one. I know. I only because, saw look, We have talked oh, in the I past about how much I like romance stories, but I like the ones that are like porn and like bittersweet and like tortured love. Well, Kaz and Inej is a tortured love. Tortured love. Tortured. Absolutely. Tortured. Yes. And Inej is basically like, you know, and like he Kaz, Kaz goes, I want you. And Inej goes, and how will you have me? Gloved, fully clothed. Like, mm -hmm. I will, I will have you bare, or I will not have you at all. Yeah, she puts it down. And then fucking leaves. And I was like, <laughs> damn. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. And um, you know, and Kaz, Kaz is dealing with he doesn't touch things. He he has like PTSD, basically. Like he has like CPTSD from when his brother was sick and he woke up on a barge with a bunch of different dead bodies that were bloated and boiled and shit from the plague. And like he doesn't want to touch anything because he still sees his hands as on that like dead flesh. And so he wears gloves all the time. He's always fully clothed. Um, and when he isn't and he touches something, he has a panic attack. Like you, you can see it happen. There's mm -hmm. multiple times where it happens throughout the series. There's even yeah. one when they are in uh, Shuhan um, mm -hmm. that Inej stops following the person that they're following to give him his gloves back so that he can calm down. She pulls him into the corner yeah. away from people so that he can't touch anybody. Yeah. And then leaves, which is a very sweet moment. And it shows that she may not talk to him about these things, but she sees it and knows exactly what's happening. Knows exactly what's happening. And, and then she's like, I couldn't leave yeah. you like this. So here's Absolutely. your gloves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here's your gloves and then leaves. And like, and that's why she's like, and how would you have me? Like gloved, fully clothed. Like you, and you can't be with me, be intimate with me you know, want to love me in that way and still wear your armor. Right. I will not be, yeah, it's not true intimacy. Oh. And, um, and so basically you face your fears or you face a life without me in that way. Yeah. And then just leaves. <laughs> and I also want to like call attention to that. Like Inej was indentured. Um, an indentured servant in the menagerie, which is mm -hmm. a brothel. Mm -hmm. And they talk about a lot of bad shit happening in that brothel. It's not just like, a, oh, there was sex. There's, you know, a lot of very bad stuff. Um, Real bad stuff. Yes. Tortured. Yes. Horrible. Like, exactly. Torture awful. stuff. Pain. Yeah, yeah. 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 And things that are not consented to by far, guys. So, no. like, for Inez to say, mm -hmm. you will have me without your armor or you won't have me at all. For her to even offer that, first of all, having the background that she has, right, is a huge thing unto itself. Yeah, I agree. And then to be like, no, 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 if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna have you truly, yeah, right? not from behind a place where you feel in power, right. And I mean, and I if that, that was, was like, meeting somebody, meeting somebody where they are at. Like yeah. that is, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, so you good. I love to scene. respect her for that. I mean, that was pretty amazing. And even to have the foresight on it, because even, you know, like I know we've all been in those moments where you love that person so much, or you just want to be with that person so badly that you're like, oh, okay, okay, I'll do with the things, you know what I mean? Right. If that's what it means or whatever. But yeah. she's like, nope, me first. This is how it's I'm like going to do it. And then, yeah. yeah not compromising on this this is this like is i what, want you but i want all of you and if you can't give me that then i will have none of you well and yeah. because she can't move forward with it really truly and it would just be another falsehood so she's not going to have that mm -hmm. she's not going to have that she wants the real thing and good for her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep yeah <clears throat> i love it yeah. They're just so good. and i really like well, kaz to be fair yeah kaz has some issues he kaz does has some greed uh, Kaz mm -hmm. has some anger. <laughs> Kaz has a lot of stuff. But I really He's like Kaz, a too. 
He's a pretty. He's got a pretty amazing mind. I like the way he um, did what he did in regards yeah, to the monster dude. That like, he he's good. He's good. But you know also, what? All the characters have a little bit of like, eh, and then you're like, oh, but they're pretty awesome. You know, yeah. all of them, them have something. It's very very relatable in regards to just human beings. I mean, yes, it's great. Go I watch agree. it. Give it um, lots I of also <laughs> really, really like the scene where he does, um, I think it's, who is it? Mathal, the Mathal or something like that, or Mahal, Mahal, I don't know. The, the, the dregs, when he goes to see the dregs and the leader of the dregs and oh. um, the leader of the dregs is like, no, 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 we're not going to have your kind in here. And like, he basically just stands there and fights everybody, gets the <laughs> shit kicked out of him, but kicks them worse. Yeah, And yeah. I loved that moment as a Kaz moment because uh, until then, we'd only really seen him in cahoots with the crows. Right Now, the other crows have had their standalone moments, like Inez, right. Jess, and Jesper. All of them have had their standalone moments, right. but not Kaz. Kaz mm -hmm. always was like the orchestrator, the instructor, the mastermind, the plan that they carried out. And he would carry mm -hmm. out some of it, don't get me wrong, but yeah. never stood in his own, really. And... Right before that scene, he was like, everybody has a tell. You you shift your weight to your back foot before you lunge. And da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And Inej goes, well, what's your tell? And he says, the cane. Nobody yeah. watches the good leg. Oh. And then we see in the next scene that he actually doesn't need the fucking cane. He mm -hmm. uses the cane to distract people yeah. so that they think he's weaker so that he can kick what the he really is. Yeah. Then what he really is. Yeah. Which further yeah. supports he's a con man. Like that's, he's a con he's, man. He's he a is. mastermind and a con man. He is. He is. <laughs> and his backstory is tragic. Tragic. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I thought yeah. that was really clever too. It's like a <clears throat> again another layer of armor that Kaz has to distract. Like mm -hmm. don't see the actual person who's really a little kid who's like terrified behind any of this. Right. Even right. to the extent that, like, the reason that he's probably so observant in catalogs and tick, tick, tick on everything is because it's out of a fear response of being hyper vigilant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, all of the characters are so interesting to me. I want to know how Inej yes. became indentured. I guess, I guess so it's because stuff. she was an orphan and someone bought her, but like, I would love to know the story there too. They, they, oh, again, the video. <laughs> yeah. In the video, they talk about that as well. I'm like, give me the books. Give me the books. I'm ready to go. Like, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I liked it. I thought it was really fucking good. <laughs> We're not even going to worry about the pentacles. We love it. We just said 10 for all of it. We love this series. Okay. We're really yeah. sad it's ended. We want it back. We're going after yes. the books. When have we said that? Yes. Like, whoa. Going after that, it. I don't think that's happened before. No, it hasn't. And not, not just I one mean, book, the books, like plural. Six. six also, six then requesting books. fan fictions mm -hmm. on so top can, of that, because when I'm done with these books, I'm going to want more. And the merch, which maybe I just need to go make merch. Yes. Like, yeah. Maybe so. Make some fucking merch. Bring okay. back, you know, uh, bring back Shadow and Bone and Half Bad. Mm hmm. <laughs> bring them back yeah i know so good yes so good. but yeah so well <clears throat> that's i mean that's what i got i got that's what i gotta say about that it's like fucking it's, 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 it was it's so amazing. good and mm -hmm. i do not get the commentary of that that critique at all i really don't i thought it was wonderful i wanted more I, no, I don't, the I only don't, time I don't, that i was like oh man is that last episode they used it all to like wrap up the characters and that was kind mm -hmm. of like a oh man it's a goodbye and da 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 and like mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it wasn't necessarily bad because it still gave you some sense of closure in a in a way on like well where do they go now what happens what what happens if yeah they well... hadn't done that mm -hmm. it would have felt weird like if they would have Annalena destroys the fold the end <laughs> like what but there were so many other characters. What do you mean the end? Right. right it's like, not just about so they her. Left essentially like a whole. 
they left essentially like a whole last episode to dedicate to this is what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and the beat goes on. You know what I mean? Yep. So that yeah. is the mood. That is the mood. But they were setting it up so that they can do the spinoffs and then they drop them. It, it's a it's a mean thing yes. Netflix did here. It's a it's a mean pick mean, them the fuck back up. Mean thing. Mean mean. Pick them back uh, up. Pick them back up. Now, we've talked for an over an hour on this, and we didn't even hit on all the things. Yes. I'm yes. telling you, it's so good, so good. We did. Um, we so, did it, yeah. I don't think a series has gotten this level of love from us. I mean, we're 47 episodes in. <clears throat> um, so we've been doing this for over two years. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is a thing. Yeah. So I, we we highly suggest you watch it. We highly suggest you re go after yes. the books, whether they're just regular reading or if you're going to go after the audible. I personally love the audible as a dyslexic person who also has to multitask and um, you know mm -hmm. to make the use of their I time. The audio, well, yeah. Audible is a way to go, especially if you want to. The, the people that are hired to do these voices are doing such an amazing job. So you you get a little yeah. bit more out of the story if you allow yourself to go there. And it's word for word of what the book says. So do it. Yeah. And Audible, your first book is free. Did you know that? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. get, get We're not sponsored, though. Just so you know. We are, we are not <laughs> sponsored. We are not being paid for any of this. We, we're just fans. Mm -hmm. We're just fans. We like movies. We like mm -hmm. shows. We like the paranormal. We like the spook. We like the gore and the giggles. Yes. We are here for you. This yes. was um, suggested to us to watch. We love it. And that's just great. And next time... We will have a Marky Poo with us, the goatfish. We'll or have Mark. We could, or he, I saw him put on the last drunken divs and I was cracking up the goat throat. Oh my God. <laughs> Your Capricorn brother from another mother will be with us <laughs> to talk about the Mm hmm. Yeah. So we're going to go after the covenant. Um, it was Mark's pick. We are excited about this. It's basically. I um, thought mm -hmm. that I had seen this and apparently I have not when I actually went to, cause I'm a visual oh, really? person, right? Yeah. You yeah. can tell me a name that means fucking nothing to me. But if I see a clip from the movie or like the movie poster or something, then I can mm -hmm. tell you if I've seen it. I have not mm -hmm. seen this, I think. So really? I'm, I'm excited. It's one that I haven't seen, but like I've heard of. Yeah. Okay. So I'm excited to see how this goes. I'm excited to see how it goes. I mean, I think I have watched it, but I can't remember all the nitty gritties. I know that there's a lot of like really cute male witches up in this show. Um, that I remember. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all that I remember. I think it was like early 2000s. I can't yeah. It's a bit of a moment. It's a bit of a moment, but it's super cute. I, I think it was 2000s. Are you going to look? You looking now? Yup. 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 Yup, yup. That's not guy Richie. Get out of here. <laughs> Movie. I know one of these which male witches is also I believe the werewolf in Penny Drop. 2006. 2006. The Covenant. The Covenant is a 2006 American supernatural horror for a uh, horror horror film. Sorry, the the lip. Directed by Rennie Harlan, written by J. S. Cardone, and starring Stephen Strait, Sebastian Stan, Laura Ramsey, Taylor Kish, Jessica Lucas. Toby Hemingway and Chase Crawford. The film, despite being panned by critics, was moderate box art office success. I'm not going to read the whole plot, but um, yeah. So that's that's apparently the covenant. Okay. 
2006. I see it here. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it not that Josh guy that's in here? I guess not. You're not going to give me like a rundown of like a... I just want like a fucking blurb, guys. A blurb? We need a blurb. Give me a blurb. We need blurb. Oh, Taylor Kitsch. That's who I was they thinking. Had joy, they oh, had good. fun. They had no yeah. fucking blurbs. Come on. No blurbs for us. No blurbs Rude. for us. <laughs> rude. Pretty much. <laughs> rude, this rude. This is how you know we're both tired. We are tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are tired. But I'm looking at these yeah. people now. Mm -mm -mm. So Taylor uh -huh. Kitsch, who plays Pogue, Perry, which I think I'm like, really? How do you go, ad uh, go audition for a role of Pogue Perry. <laughs> like, look, just like, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, he's now John What's Carter. What's your character's name? Don't Pogue, worry about it. Pogue Perry. <laughs> Crazy. Pogue, Pogue um, but Perry. he's John Carter. He grew up to be John Carter, and then is one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's exciting. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got there. Pogue. I was thinking okay. other people were in this thing. Reed Garwin is another one. Uh huh. Yeah, Pogue Perry. Pogue I'm Perry. looking at the other names, and I'm like, you know, Pogue got the shit into the stick out of this. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, for sure he did. I'm reading there. There's one guy who just is labeled Party Kid. Party Kid. Gorman well, we like a party kid. Oh, that's okay. Fun. Yeah. And there's Chase I, Collins. Yeah. Okay, look, I don't, I'm not straining my eye. Anyway, <laughs> yes, so <laughs> it's a movie of a bunch of like dude witches, right? Like dude teens, witches, mm -hmm. essentially. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting from this. Oh, it's so sad. This oh, one girl mm -hmm. is just Nikki's bar waitress. She doesn't have a name. <laughs> no name. Yeah. <laughs> That's a like party kid. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, anyhow, Is so that's what we're going to be. We will now have, since we gave you back to back witchy weekends um, and hi, you're oh, in here it. Here we go. Here we oh, go. Oh, what, what, what you got? What you got? Here we go. You got a blurb? something. Here's the blurb. Okay. I was trying to give a teaser. Okay. Give me that blurb. Give me that Four blurb. young men who belong mm -hmm. to a supernatural legacy are forced okay. to battle a fifth power long thought to have died out. Another great dun, dun, dun. force they must contend with is the jealousy and suspicion that threatens to tear them apart. Dun, there you dun, go. Dun. Okay, I like That's it. A little okay. as a I, I remember watching this with right. my kids, I think, in 2006. Because they would have been, like, in junior high at that time, I believe. Yeah. I think that... I remember I think seeing, that... like, pictures of it, but I've never watched it. Mm -hmm. So... I'm I'm excited for it. Okay. All right. Well, but we're in. We'll have you Mark. I'm more excited about the fact that we're going to have Mark in here. Mark. I know we're excited. We love a Mark. We love a I Mark. Know. He's so hilarious. We do. Um, let's yeah. see. Um, so we will not be back at our regular scheduled program. We will be back on the yeah. 26th because there's witchy cruise and all that other stuff that's happening so we're changing it up so the 26th and the 27th is the also, next uh witchy weekend yes also so i'm two, getting new two weeks off and there's internet happening yeah internets are good yes yes yeah mm -hmm. so yeah so just keep in mind guys our our schedule is a little weird that's why we we only have one, we had one week and came back this week instead of the other one because there's stuff going yeah. on. So, um, you know, we change it up every now and then, but we will be back. What is the date? 26th. Yeah. So we'll be back on the 26th yeah. with, to do the covenant. So you have, um, fuck, how, you have one, two, you have three weeks to watch a movie. Guys, you just watched a season in a week. You can certainly yeah. do this. If I come back and you guys haven't watched this, arr, there's going to be hell to pay. Arr. <laughs> arr. My husband just arged from the other room and chuckled. He's he's so happy. <laughs> so, happy. <laughs> so, yes. Like, 
take your swashbuckling asses to right like fucking there. Amazon or wherever the hell that movie is. Um, and look at, you can remember, we have a just watch down here. Let me watch it. And we have the whole does the dog die for triggers and shit. Take mm -hmm. advantage of that. You have three weeks. Trey. Mm -hmm. It's a movie, not a series. Not a series. You but don't worry. Movies. We'll come right back at you with another series soon. <laughs> don't worry about it. The movie is because The Covenant. And it's not. The movie is The Covenant. It's from 2006. There is another version, The Covenant, that is Guy Ritchie's. That's not what we're talking about. It is the 2006 The Covenant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Covenant. With all the cute, cute young men, college men, witchy poos on the front. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll do a thumbnail tomorrow. I promise. There. You will not be confused. Um, but that'll be the 26th. So we'll see you then. In the meantime, we'll Raven's got yeah. cruises and all kinds of things going on. And I have new internet happening that's going to upgrade. So I don't have to be lagging and stuff anymore. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna get better. Hopefully get this stuff moving again and such. You are going to get better. You yeah. are going to get better. If anything, you are rocking that eye patch like anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, working on it. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing good. Mm -hmm. So yes. So there you go. That's that's what we're doing. Um, I know that you're going to be on a cruise, but is there any special like announcement or anything you want to give before you leave? Today is the last day to RSVP for the witchy meet and greet. You can, which is happening on the Queen Mary. So if you are in the LA of areas and you're feeling magical and up for a paranormal good time, and you would like to meet Scott Cunningham's sister who wrote this really amazing book that's giving us a private book talk and a book signing and having dinner with us and drinks. And we're staying aboard the Queen Mary and doing a paranormal exploration then come along because april 12th is the day for you if you know anybody that is in the la area that might want some witchy fun um tell them about it share 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 go to sabasocial.com um on the homepage, Nathan has lovingly put all the things right there. Or you can also follow us on Instagram where a lot of our information is generally shared there. Um, really cool video that I will repost that our um, one of our admins, Snow, has made. Um, so come along. Come along. If you, And you only have to RSVP if you want the swag bag. There's some very fancy things that I've ordered, such as a protection bracelet. Mm -hmm. This side nice. is selenite. This side mm -hmm. is black tourmaline. And we've got some labradorite in the middle here. Um, protection bracelet. We have some tasty treats. We have some other goodies for you. Keep so your hairbrush. You Wear a bracelet. Wear a bracelet. Keep your hair brushed. <laughs> I'm I'm tending on just putting my hair up, probably in a hat. Like oh I'm God. just gonna like like seriously put it on the top of my head, and then just kind of like yep. put a beanie over myself. Just I mean, <laughs> might be a thing. Might be a thing. Um. So yes, if you're interested or you know somebody who would really really enjoy this whole situation, the whole thing is like dinner is pay on your own. Dinner uh, drinks pay on your own. Costs nothing for the book talk, costs nothing for the paranormal exploration. Um, come on board. Um, I believe the Queen Mary it has a ten dollar uh tour fee. If you go at any other time, it would cost you 40. So, at a discounted rate, yeah. come on aboard, help the Queen Mary stay afloat with your ten dollar gift uh towards a floating museum and a hotel, and um, let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of stuff is going to be recorded and you're going to have to be patient with me because I will be traveling right after that mm -hmm. and I will do what I can. But the internet at sea is not great. Let me just say, okay. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of my editing mm -hmm. software will not be available for me until I'm in actual port. And if I'm in actual port, I'm going to be eating tacos with Kim and drinking margaritas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Priorities, <laughs> guys. 
That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so you may have to be patient no. for all the things, but I am clearing my cameras and my stuff so that I will have as much space as possible to take video. Yeah. Good. Yay. I'm looking forward to this shit once you're back. I am excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's a pretty groovy thing. It's a groovy thing we're doing. <laughs> See tacos. Oh yes, tacos. I see now. Tacos and up. Taco. Oh, you oh do we it. do it. We do it. You do it. I do it. Do it. You do it. Tacos. Yes. I know. We taco specifically party, taco party. Taco party. It's not the actual lyrics, but that's there, what I hear every time. There's <laughs> three stops that we're taking on this cruise, and it's Puerto Vallarta, Mazatlan, and Cabo San Lucas. And I have found a highly five star restaurant taco and margarita place oh. for each of the ports let's get our taco on <laughs> we're gonna get our taco on this is the cruise for kim <laughs> that great i love that yeah. tacos. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um okay what you got uh, you got yeah. a bunch of stuff going on well for me one i'm in general resting some um but on the eighth i will be getting new internet so fingers crossed that that all goes smooth um, it will be fiber internet, and it'll be much, 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 much faster. Uh, so I will be able to upload videos and things again. You guys that might have been on my Patreon and things like that, if you're wondering what's going on with the delay, it's because to upload a video right now, it takes like two fucking days. <laughs> and shuts down the rest of the internet for everybody else, essentially, in the yeah. process. It's um, um, very slow time. here. And so in dire need of an upgrade, that will be happening on the 8th. So expect a lot of like videos and things incoming. You'll be seeing me much more. Um, little live snippets and et cetera will be happening more uh, once I can do that again. I've missed it. <laughs> um, but also, you know, obviously resting up with this. You'll be seeing the eye patch for a little bit until further notice. I don't know. Um, and, you know, that's just how it's going to be. Um, something that I do want to mention, if you have not seen me talk about this already, um, some things have changed on my website. I so, went to your website the other day when I had a little moment. I'm like, I yeah. see you doing the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. um, and there's going to be more. Like, the website is going to be changed around. I'm getting a call with, I've gone through a lot of transition in the last like two years. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting a call to shift a lot of those things. The work is still going to be there. I still am who I am and do what I do. Um, mm -hmm. generational healing, you know, ancestral stuff, ancestral priestess, death movement free, all of this stuff. Like that's a part of me, um, the dead, the spirits, etc. But um, healing. But there is a shift in how I want to format things and put out there. I just, I want to reassess and shift the energy and make it align with where I am now. Um, and so in the part process of that, I have shifted around how I offer services. It used to be like a long list <laughs> that you could go in and go down and there was energy healing and tarot and, um, uh, or energy clearing and tarot. And there was um, shadow sessions and working with that. There was ancestral healing sessions. Mm -hmm. um, there are mentorships and all different sizing of package, et cetera. And I have now taken all of that away it mm -hmm. didn't go away. It's just not listed for purchase directly. And what I have done instead was in my, what, nine years of doing this as a business, I have figured out that a lot of people, when they come to um, a spiritual service, they don't always know what they're looking for. They just True. know that they are looking for something. Yeah. And so what I've done is instead put up a spiritual consultation so mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a low fee and it, that is essentially for booking guarantee instead of just people booking and then leaving and because it happens. That's to prevent flaking. But also yeah. the fact that like sometimes you can get an answer in those very immediately. Um, I have like 29 years of experience at this point. <laughs> I know I don't look like it, but I do. And <laughs> um, and honestly, a lot of times that can be taken care of in there. But another reason that it's a consult now instead of all these other options is because it allows me to talk to you directly and see what's going on and figure out together what works, what are you looking for, what do you need? 
and then make a plan from that. And what I mean by that is not try to sell you some top brand shit. I mean, literally make a plan that works for you and work with you to make that plan happen. Meaning I also work in sliding scale now, mm -hmm. particularly if you are LGBTQ, BIPOC, ethnically Jewish, like any of those kind of situations in particular, um, I will work with you. Um, but I'll work with a lot of people in general on those things. I feel like right now there's a lot of shit going around. <laughs> people are feeling it hard. And there's a lot of healing to be done. And a lot of healers yeah. are overtaxed right now trying yes, to do are. it all. Yes, they are. Um, so yeah. this is my way of sort of going, okay, let me get out on the field and open it up a bit. Because if mm -hmm. they don't know specifically what they need, or maybe they do, but they're thinking, oh, I can't afford that, or I don't know what it involves. I don't know if I can dedicate that time to it. This consult is a way to talk about that with you. This consult mm -hmm. is a way to really get in and ask those questions and let me know where you're coming from. And I can explain to you like if there is a way that we can work with that and, and how that works or what you can even do from where you are right now to start towards that. Um, you know, and so it's to help in the immediate, to help in the short term and in the long term. And it's a 25 buck consult for an hour. Yeah. With me. That ain't nothing. That is nothing. That ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. In the land of, of spiritual services, that ain't shit. And mm -hmm. then we can have a conversation about, okay, well, what would be a good work, you know, method for you? Is it tarot? Are you needing energy cleansing? Are you mm -hmm. wanting mentorship, but you're not sure on what? Do we need to pick a path within that? I have six different paths within mentorship that I structure everything by. Most people come to me for one of the six, and some of them move to another one of those prongs to follow a different path eventually. Um, but I have those, and it's not just sort of a generic mentorship. There are specific areas that people hit on. And... Um, and that's something I think is also missed with how it used to be listed. Yeah. So now we're going to have a conversation because that's what I'm good at, talking. I'm Southern. She is. Now, so can I talk. give you a little bit of a crow? Can I give you just, a, just? I mean, I've got maybe five minutes of something that I forgot to share with you, but is very important because of something that I learned specifically from your services. Can I share? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Bear and I have a whole nother YouTube channel called The Pirate and I, A-Y-E-I. We travel. It's a peg-legged point of view of travel. I'm diabetic. He's an amputee. We go around. We do the stuff. We did reviews mm -hmm. on various places we stay. And, and part of those um, are the McMinimins hotels. We mm -hmm. uh, went to Hotel Oregon, which is a very popular uh, UFO sighting area down in McMinnville, Oregon. So we went there. We'd stayed there before in the beginning of the pandemic and a small, uh, a bunch of the small bars and things like that were closed. So we were able to meet our friends there. We went on down to the cellar bar and um, I got to meet this lady. This lady I thought was my friend's friend because she was talking with her before I had gotten down there and I got to um, meet her. So I took Chris's Ancestor 101 um, and I am, and it took me a long time to say this, a psychic medium, okay? Because I always hey. thought, well, <laughs> it, 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 you, it, when you're a tuber, and you're a witch yeah. and everybody just starts la you know slapping labels on them you're just like oh, I don't, you yeah. know you know it, it can be overwhelming okay so it mm -hmm. took me a while to say it and be comfortable saying it but this is definitely something that happens and i came to chris um in a time where i was feeling very almost what do you call it um agoraphobic where I couldn't really leave my home. I had locked down my home so well that I could finally have peace there. So it was difficult for me to just go out to because of the energy of picking up from other people, other places. It yeah. was hard. And as much as I love to travel and love to meet people or whatever, it was difficult because I would have all these ghosts coming at me all the time. And it was almost to a point where I would eat my food and then now I'm feel sick. Um, you know, like there was yeah. just, it was just a lot and it was just very difficult for me to navigate in the world 
in even just how my life, okay? And I was becoming really depressed, staying at home a lot. And it was, it was just hard. It was just hard. So I had come to Chris with this information. She's like, we're going to teach you how to do the things. And I took the Ancestry 101 roll course. Over, please, let's go. Roll it up, roll it <laughs> You know, Chris, Chris is the do friend. You go to Chris because they are a solution friend. Okay. So, you know, if you want to feel better, go to a counselor. <laughs> like she's not going to coddle you to tell you I the thing. Well, I can do that too. Well, to I can do that too, but to I'm, it's going to be, there's going to be a truth bomb in it. There's going to be a truth to it. I'm like, earth sign, you need to know. <laughs> you need to know. And you better be ready. I have a chance for moon. I can also nourish, but like it's there's true. still a cappy. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so um, she taught me in that Ancestry 101, and I had actually taken it twice because I had uh, had to reread some of the things that I had thought that I had gone over, but I had missed. So I had taken it kind of twice, did the things. Um, I started implementing certain things as I was meeting this lady. This uh, this person was, the the ghost was right there, right there, actually touched me. And in the process, um, I ended up getting more information for this person than I had, I think, had ever gotten before, where I was just getting feelings and colors and emotions, but not all of it. I had his full name, his nickname, his date of birth, the tattoo that she got, told her where it was happening, who was involved, um, how he died. And, and then I said something in his, said his tummy, he couldn't eat food. I told him what, uh, I told her exactly what he was missing because he couldn't eat the macaroni and cheese because he had a feeding tube. And then he touched my stomach where my monitor is. I have a continuous uh, monitor for diabetes. And he was telling me that he had a port in there. I hit all the things. Then as soon as I started doing this halfway through this whole situation, she's in tears. She's very grateful, happy tears because of this has yeah. been happening for her. Um, and all of a sudden there must be a beacon and they all start coming in. Uh, yes. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So then I did all the things that Chris told me to do in regards to Ancestry 101, and they started forming a line. And then the person that we had, how do I say this? Okay, each McMinniman's property has memorialized the people that had spent time there that had possibly passed away or yeah. whatever that had had imprinted energy on there. So the person's room that we had checked into, her name was Rose. Uh, Rosalina, Rose came straight to me and she's like, we need to talk later. I said, okay. So like, we had a whole thing, like a whole situation, but I was able to bring the right person to the podium to give the message that I needed to give to this person and helped her on her healing path. And the rest of them that was just noise wasn't there. And it gave me an immense amount of clarity and yeah. I felt empowered instead of overwhelmed and I was able to cut it off and then just go have fun. And it was probably the third time in my life that that has ever happened. And I'm going to tell you that was mm -hmm. because of Chris. It was because of me, because I did the work too. Yes, it but was. It really it was. was. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're you welcome. know, I hear that. I hear that a lot of like people getting rushed or overwhelmed, or some people will be like, mm -hmm. "I feel a lot, but I don't know what I'm feeling," and right. that in itself is overwhelming and yeah. confusing. Yeah. Um, and the method that you're talking about, um, you know, is in 101, but it's it's also taught in mentorships a lot with me. It's something that I talk people through a lot because. For some reason, even when it's written in the 101, mm -hmm. it's different to read something. Like you said, you had to go back and read it a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. And I suggest that with people with, with the 101 um, mm -hmm. because there are different things that sink in at different times. And um, sometimes even with mentorship, it helps a lot to have that conversation about it because you can read something, but when it's a dialogue with your own thoughts around it, it's easier to sort of shift a perspective. Mm -hmm. And people 
people I think get overwhelmed because there's a, a space of like, well, I've I'm used to getting like rushed. And right. so this is just how my gift works. Right. And it's like, but no, that's not like your your ability is still yours. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so you can still control how you use it. You still have boundaries and there's still consent to be considered and things like that. And mm -hmm. if not, then you've got some boundary issues, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you have, you know, some, something in there that has to do with your sense of power. Uh, not that you don't have it, but your idea of it and boundaries. And once you kind of go, no, 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 this is how we're going to do this. This is the structure. You can play along or you can get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not the one we're talking to then. Yeah, Find yeah. someone else. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And once you kind of find the space to do that, it makes everything a lot easier to hear. You know, it's just, it was clear as a bell. It was clear as a bell. And I hated being the person to have the knowledge and not get the mm -hmm. clarity because then you're trying to communicate yeah. with the person that's here in front of you, you know, and they're needing this information. And it's like, it's so busy. They're just looking at you like, why did you, you know, and it almost feels mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be inadvertently hurting this person. I don't know right, how else to put that, but it's like, I, then yeah. I would just like, then I would just like clam up and not say stuff and then basically be tormented the entire time right. because this conversation is happening over here while this mm -hmm. one's happening over here. And I'm trying to not look crazy while talking to somebody straight right. up. Yeah. That was a big, oh my God. Was a lot of time. There's a story when I, it was like years and years ago. I was, it was my day off y'all and they did not listen and I had had alcohol. So oh, no. I wasn't boundary at the moment. <laughs> and I was talking to someone that I hadn't met before and I just start seeing their grandpa and their grandma and their, their long story short, their, their grandmother had a play in him passing oh. apart. And it was a whole thing. And I just started seeing that. And just like, uh, okay. And like, that was a whole other path that I went down. Um, and sometimes, you know, you don't expect to be in the position that you're in, but you're still in that. Yeah. And what do you do? What do you do in those situations? Um, yeah. Many people, I had the luxury of growing up with someone who, you know, my mother uh, is a practitioner. And so I had the luxury of growing up that when that would happen to me, I would have questions asked of me instead of sort of encouraged to shut it down or push it away or right. don't be silly or not believe. Instead, I was asked to dive deeper with questions to ask how it felt to me. And well, did I ask them directly? You know, did am I making an assumption or did I just ask them? Just ask them then, you know, and that, um, you know, I didn't know if it was good or bad. Well, how did you feel? You know, right. and, and those kind of questions really um, grew critical thinking. Yeah. And that is something in a lot of stuff these days that's shared is particularly online and spiritual stuff. We are missing, guys. <laughs> We're missing it. Yeah. And that alone helps so much um, because you're looking to what you think. And how you can help in this. And what you are willing and not willing to do. For that matter too. Mm -hmm. um, and. It just. It's easy to get overwhelmed. There shouldn't be any shame in that. It's yeah. easy to get overwhelmed. It's easy. Um, you know, especially if you've grown up in a place where it is shoved down. And stuff to have the urge to shove that down. Um, yeah. But you know. That's why I love working with people. Because I had the luxury of growing up with someone who did not do that. And now I would like to be the luxury for others uh, to be that voice that they did not have mm -hmm. to say, no, 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 let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. Ask a question, mm -hmm. go deeper, get another yeah. answer, you know, until you have clarity, zoom yeah. in on it, dive in, let's go further. Um, you know, you're safe with you. And, uh, you know, as long as you're covering your P's and Q's and trusting your God and shit, mm -hmm. usually you're all right. It's when you start to quaver uh, that you get in trouble. You start to, yeah, yeah. 
You yeah. know, it also helps you check the energy of who you're actually talking to on the other side, because um, having that clarity helps you understand who who you're talking to. And um, similar to out here in the real world, you know what I mean? If you were talking to a con artist or somebody who's about to mug you or, you know, all that other stuff, you're, you're going to feel that energy kind of kind of quickly, especially if you're street smart. But you know what I mean? You, it, it only takes a couple of sentences before you can like really read what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and that did that here for me so that I didn't get asshole yeah. ghosts that were pushy as hell, yep. you know, trying to, you know, not respecting my boundaries or whatever, so much so that ancestors had to boot them, you know, type situations. Mm-hmm. And that also makes me feel bad because, thing. you know, they're desperate. That's, that's another thing right there mm-hmm. that you're talking about the ancestors booting. That's yeah. another thing within mentorship that I teach is that Sometimes people think that their boundary has to be just them, but ancestors, guides, um, spirits that are helpful to you, like those are people who will bounce for you and create literally like form a form a fucking um, shield wall. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. And and regulate the things. And that is something that also you know I teach in that and and talk about in Ancestor One Hundred One as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that is vital. It's vital for that. And, you know, a lot of people to that would say, well, I'm adopted or I don't have a good relationship with my family. Cool. You still have family. You still have ancestors. Ancestors is more than just your immediate relatives. Yep. Yep. It's true. It goes very deep and very far. It's true. And And sometimes they're more protective of you than you are of yourself. And there have been times that I'm like, oh, okay, let's do this. And my grandmother is like, absolutely not. They're gone. And I'm like, yep. Okay. So we, we trust your the bouncer. grandmother and my your grandmother yeah. and my great grandmother actually get along very well. Yes, and they, they do. have very similar things <laughs> and similar roles because my great grandmother oh. is my bouncer spiritually. And yeah. like, yeah, if if she ain't down with you, we can't be down. My mom said I couldn't play. Well, you know what I mean? Yep. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And you know what? And at first no, I was like, oh, wait, I could have done some good. I'm like, not. Nah, mm. Graham said no. Yeah. <laughs> Graham said no. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's also something that's such an addition that when you are able to know who in your line and in your your posse, if you will, your spiritual posse are mm-hmm. your helpers, who are your your um your welcoming committee, who is your bouncer, who is your salesman, if you will, who is the one yeah. that you know is the charismatic one. Like all of them have these sort of roles that they excel in. They are not. Yeah held only to that but they are they are very good at Mm -hmm. and want to help Mm -hmm. and already kind of often do that for you to be honest even though we don't know yeah um and so there's so many of those things already you know sometimes people are like well i want to do ancestor work and i kind of chuckle a little bit because i'm like you're already (laughs) doing it you just don't know you're doing it yeah (laughs) they're doing it without you in fact (laughs) they're still gonna love you you know what i mean they're still gonna protect you that's that's their line in their interest but either way um my point in that is is you know that's there's so many different elements of it that are taught in there and uh, bring healing from that like even in what you're talking about and talking you know working with your lines and blockages there and think that's another thing is i have um ancestral blockages as a service that i do all those things and this is why i said well i'm just gonna make a spiritual consult because Then I don't have to go, this is a whole spiel on everything super deep and attempt to kind of put into words what you often have to experience. Um, That's why it's called the mysteries. (laughs) And instead, let's just have a chat. Talk to me. Let's talk. And then when we talk, we'll see what you need and we can go from there. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what it is now. 25 bucks for a consult. We talk. We figure out what's going on. Sometimes it's answered right in that. Other times we make a short-term plan or a long-term plan, et cetera. There is shamanic drumming and drumming, like neo-shamanic drumming and stuff. There is um, journey work involved with that that I do. There are so many different things, spell work, et cetera, um, ritual work, custom ritual design for you know, different liminal spaces and things um, that you're going through transitions. Um, all of these are things that I have provided for people over the years via mentorships and 
it's a really long list and I quite frankly don't want to write all of that. So just like have a consult and we can talk, please. <laughs> talk it out, talk it out. Other than that, on Saturdays, I still have divination going on on the Discord, which is free to join, free for everybody, please come. Um, but every Saturday at noon Eastern time, we gather in the voice chat there and we pull cards or throw runes or um, some have dice. I know there's some bones and charm sets that come out too, um, Oracle, etc. And we uh, come together as a community. We have some fellowship time. And uh, some people don't even pull things. They just come to enjoy the time and kick the week off on like a nice note. With of course, they give their energy. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. Some people even use it kind of like a podcast. I know um, Charlie, for instance, Charlie says go, often will tune in and like clean while she's listening. Okay. Yeah. And so it's just kind of a way to have mm, a sense of community mm. in within the witchy spaces um, mm -hmm. that many of us don't often get. Um, and also a really good place to learn, to learn and practice on different people and different like new decks and things like that, or different tools, different kinds of divination tools, all of those things, um, you know, happen on there and it's free. It's totally free. Everybody is welcome. Um, and then the last thing I would say is Patreon is still going. I do have some spaces available, uh, on the mentorship section and on the all seeing eye, I believe I still have one um so please check that out there are a lot of really good tidbits there um, a lot of goodies that are only offered on my patreon and aren't anywhere else uh so keep that in mind there are like exclusive things um if you guys are wondering where i've been i've been on patreon and in the discord that is where i am when i have internet that doesn't like videos i'm in the discord a lot <laughs> so Come see me, please. Yep. I would love to see you. Yeah. So that's what's going on with me. Other than that, I'm just trying to rest my eyes. Uh, so when I'm not doing things like that directly, I'm usually not on the computer because it's eye strain. This one's doing the work of two. Yep. Um, and just doing facial exercises and things that people have given me, which I will, I will say, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a minute and just thank everyone that responded to my Facebook message that was like a dental assistant or a nurse or or has had it as well has had bell's palsy and is giving me tips on um you know facial massages and exercises and teas and different things to help with this and letting me know you know how long theirs lasted or if it is reoccurring what i can do and just there's a lot of outpouring of support uh, many people sent love and healing and lit candles. I know some people have done healing rituals for me. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much. Um, it has been a rough couple of years. And that was a very hard day with it being my dad's death date as well. And also the day that I got engaged and I'm divorced. Um, and so it was a lot <laughs> all at once to wake up to and process. Have <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, um just, you know, and also there are bills. There are medical bills with this that I got to pay. And uh, with the transition space that I am in right now, that's a challenge, which is another reason I'm talking about this. And I appreciate the the crow of me, uh, Raven, because, you know, this is the thing that I love to do. And this is money I need to survive and pay bills and do the things that I need to do to better be able to serve. Um, and I'm in a tight place right now to be very honest. Um, I'm not a beggar. I'm an earth sign. I'm a Capricorn. I'm not going to come on here and be like, guys, I need to go fly. But I am saying like, it's tight and it's hard. And I just want to do the shit that I love. And I know I was meant to do. Yeah. Um, and I need your help in doing that guys. Help me help you, please. Help me help Pretty you. much. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, nope, we understand. I think we've all but been also, there. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me already. And not just monetarily in that sense, but, you know, the candles and the rituals and the tidbits of information and the suggestions and, you know, just all of that. Thank you. And the people that I call or send a video to when I'm having a whole breakdown moment. 
<laughs> Thank you. Well, we have a pretty awesome community on a whole. We really do. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Some good people up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But anyway, Shadow and Bone was fucking awesome. Yes, it was. Like more. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm going to go we will see you right now. <laughs> yes, we will see you in three weeks. Yeah, for the Covenant, which is a movie, so there's no excuses if you haven't seen it. I will hunt you down. I'm a privateer. I have a license. I can do that. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you back on the 26th with Marky Poo. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Hey. Two Cappies and a Virgo. Hi. Given their review. Yep. Given their review of a movie. Let's do this. I'm excited. It's gonna be fast. And I hope that my internet is so much better then. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Also, have a lot of fun on your trip if I don't see you directly again. Like, I want you to have a blowout fun. You have been working really hard. That quiz, that fucking test that you've been trying to do yeah. consistently, you finally beat it. Like, go and enjoy yourself, please. I know. I'm so excited. I finally <laughs> beat that shit. I'm so tired of it. Okay. I'm just like, yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. So excited. So excited. Yes. If you want to follow any of the like cruise fun, um, jump over to the pirate and I, A Y E I, um, over on Instagram, you're going to see lots of shorts, um, that happen mm -hmm. there and over on our YouTube channel. So you're going to see a lot of that because that'll be easily uploaded, um, before I can do like the editing when I get home for the longer things. Um, so there's that. And then for Queen Mary stuff, you'll see that on sabasocial.com. Uh, and I may even put it on my Ravenflower YouTube channel as well. I mean, like, she's, I mean, I got YouTube channels coming out the <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, Where should I put it? <laughs> all the places. Yes. So we'll be sharing Anywhere, all of those. All the places, things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Everywhere. So, but make sure that you are, um, if you, make sure you at least like um, Pirate and I Instagram because you'll see a lot of information coming on through there. And then if you would like to consider liking and subscribing, we're growing that channel. So come along with us. Um, I am on a journey to also be a travel agent and somebody who sells travel insurance now that I have a license to do so. So um, come on in. We're, we're planning bigger and amazing trips. And in 2026, Sabbath Social Crew is going to England and we're having our meet and greet at Stonehenge. So um, oh my God. things yes. are happening. And then we're going on a great big, huge cruise, lots of countries, lots of places, lots of uh, sacred sites. And wouldn't that be amazing not to see it with your family who's going to be like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? No, you'd be going with like-minded individuals that are like, oh, Let's feel the stones together. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yes. A bunch of fucking hippies. Anyway. <laughs> Which hippies are going? <laughs> oh, my God. Which hippies? I love it. Whippies, if you will. Whippies. <laughs> yeah. Or hitches. I like that. Anyway. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. 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 Also, I would like to say, too, you don't often reference this, but I, I want to mention it. There's a Discord for Sabbath Social. There is. Um, and you guys, like, why, if you're not on there, why are you not on there? Like, get involved and, like, get yourself onto the Discord. Um, yeah. There is a hub to all of the different things. I mean, there's a lot of different team members involved. Mm -hmm. And there's always a lot of different activities going on. Um, there's, like, exercising where they're doing tours of places. There are book reviews. There are classes that are being talked about there's you know you see ba behind the scenes shit from from um we're, the, we've got a yep. study group where we're doing this for an entire year we're raising our frequencies yeah. and the next study group is going to be palmistry um right so like there's stuff going on on the discord as well so mm -hmm. if you are just hearing about the tri the course the, the cruise which is great Mm -hmm. There's way other, like, there's so many other things. And if you are someone who is like, I can't keep up with all the members, um, the team members and what's going on, the Discord is a really good way to keep up with that because a lot of us are putting our things in there as we're doing them. Yep. Uh, like, like, um, Tam, Tamanova, um, yep. has a section where it's like tips and you can ask questions in there to go mm -hmm. do that. So like, yep. 
it's a really good way to get interacted interactive with the community sava social <laughs> social that's the social platform go get on it go get on it go get on to, it like plug that for a second it, it is a little different in regards to the Discord because it, we we have this little sacred space. So we are a chosen family. Yeah. Um, so um, you'll have to be a member in order to join. That's what comes with your membership um, so that we can keep it a safe place for all the people. But mm -hmm. there are people that are looking for thirds and fifths in order to do spell works um, or certain things. There's... Um, spiritual research happening um lizzie has crystal club mm -hmm. she picks a crystal each month yes. and they go after it jenna has a book club we've just read um the other mistress really good really good if you want an audible chris oh chris the other mistress oh boy you're gonna be like what? Okay. yeah so <laughs> yeah bear's like is really good he was listening to it in the car I <laughs> They're really good. Um, we got a lot of stuff. We even on Sunday nights we have a D and D yeah. group, which Bear heads up with Colby, yeah. and um, we so like, we just engage. If you guys want to be involved, and you're looking at it from the outside, and you're like, "How are we keeping track of all these different things? I wish I knew about <laughs> these things before they happened." And and you yeah. know what? I wish I could get involved with it. You can. It's called being a team member and getting in on the Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a ton of, it's like, it's the hub where you can get all the information in one spot yeah, and interact yeah. with it. We have a lot of fun. So we have a lot of fun. And you know what? There's certain things like this, the book, like uh, we were talking about, you know, in our little group, it's like, this is, this has turned out to be a very vulnerable situation. And you're doing a lot of like shadow work that I wasn't anticipating on doing, but then I'm just like, oh my gosh. And then I realized I'm with my crew that I can be really vulnerable with. And this is my opportunity yeah. to really work through some things that have been hanging yeah. on or little tethers, little snips and clips that I need to make. And I've, I've got like the safe group in order to do that with. And I yes. think that when I first started my path, that's all I ever wanted. That's all I ever yeah. wanted. Yeah. I think often as, as practitioners, we crave community. We do. Because we see community in so many ways, but it's just not the community that's for us. Right. And then it's really hard to find ours. And, you know, like it's our own kind of six of crows exactly. situation. Yeah, it's exactly and right. That's what these discords and these memberships and these these places, even like this, where we, we mm -hmm. gather ritually, you know, every two weeks, um, we're talking about reviews on things, but it's still coming together for fellowship. It's still coming together to feel connected with people of like mind and in different spaces, there's different work that's done. Mm -hmm. um, but it still isn't any less. And it, it's something that's needed. It's something that is like soul medicine to have. Yeah. And um, so, you know, if you, if you're looking at the six of crows, like, man, I wish I had that, like as a pagan, as a practitioner, um, those places exist. And these are the things that, you know, Raven and I are, are trying to provide and many other people, um, yeah. you know, our friends and, and, and um, co-creators and et cetera, like are also doing the same. Um, and they're out there. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel abandoned or isolated we're here we out here we out here doing this stuff <laughs> virtually and also in person we out here yeah especially right now there's a bunch of shit going on for a bunch of people we are in the middle of an eclipse gateway too yeah Ooh. yes we are and a and, mercury um, retrograde in aries Ugh. there's a couple things going on this month. um but yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I know a bunch of other people do. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're having a really hard time right now, trust that there are communities out there that do just want to lift you up. Yep. 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 It's true. No, I'm not even like, I love you, you know? but I love you more. Do I love you? I love you. you. I love you so much <laughs> it's the truth <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much though pretty much 
So with that said, we will see you on the 26th with the Covenant and with Mark, Goatfish. Thank you for watching. Thank you for exploring the Shadow and Bone with us. This is kind of the curtain on it until they bring it back. Mm -hmm. um, and if they do, we'll jump on that shit. I'm sorry, you guys, but like, I don't care how many suggestions there are. The moment I hear it's back and it's able to be watched, if that happens, yeah, that's what's gonna be on here. <laughs> we did. Like, we're attacking that. We are attacking. So, it's yep. in your best interests, guys, to yep. bring that back. Just saying. Where's the petition okay. that I sign? You know? Where is it? Where is it? We can go find it. We can go find it. I think that one video I sent you has a link to it. Yeah. There we go. Maybe can we share that link somewhere that people can see it too so they can watch that? I can do the things. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that too so that you guys can look at that, see some of the behind the scenes that Raven's been talking about, and mm -hmm. also look at that petition as well. Yeah. Bring it back. Okay. Well, with that said, <laughs> Have fun on your cruise. Everybody look up my website, please. Uh, come, let's have a talk. And um, we'll see you on the 26th. Yeah. And don't forget about our boys. Our boys tomorrow. That's right. We're have, we've got Those drunken, drunken divs. divs. Those drunken divs, they're going to be drunken and they're going to be doing divs. Well, they're they going to be divin? Like a they're going to be drunken. They're going to be drunken and divin. Mm -hmm. Drunken and divin. Yes. Drunken Maybe and divin away. even in that order. Yep. Truth. <laughs> Truth. Yes. Yeah, yeah, depends. If there's pre gaming involved. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we love your faces. Thank you for being here with us every other week to do this. Uh, it is fun. I, I, I'm sure I speak for Riv when I say that this is like a fun, like nice little relief mm -hmm. when we get to do this. Um, yep. Because it's just something that's different where we get to come on and just be ourselves. There's no, you know, worrying about other things or making sure everything is is um, said and approached. And like we we do plugs at the very end, but mostly like we're just showing up to hang out and give our opinion on shit. And like we got those. So <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to hang out with everybody. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend. Make sure you see the boys tomorrow, because if you love Mark and he's coming on the 26th, you better go see him tomorrow, too, and support. Yep. Yeah. Um, and of course, blue Nathan, uh, who is now deblued. He's deblued. He's now deblued. Yeah. He's now deblued. He's very handsome. Bald, <laughs> deblued. Um, yeah, looks wonderful. Love it. But yeah, deblued. Deep um, did he become unblued? Get it? Like unblued. Unblued. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. So yeah, make sure you go watch them tomorrow. Uh, we love your faces. We gotta go. I. I want to not be staring at a monitor with this eye. So, no. bye. <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs>